Okay, you're welcome back. Uh, before now, we've been talking with uh, Fuminso uh, Babarinde. We've also been talking with Otumba Shegun Showomi and Honorable Vincent Dubani. They were all on our show trying to uh, talk about the way forward, things that have happened within the week, especially the town hall meeting and some of the manifestos that have been uh, in public domain for everybody to see. Uh, today we'll be uh, reading out what the Labour Party said in their manifesto, but first let's take some uh, headlines that interest us at this moment. From Premium Times we have that increasing population, oil and gas can no longer feed Nigeria, that's according to Obasanjo. Liberate yourselves, vote out APC, Atiku tells Lagosians. Lai Mohammed attacks Atiku over campaign statement. Uh, that's from Premium Times. We also have from The Guardian, Adefara Sin says Nigeria needs exceptional presidential leader in 2023. I think Adefara Sin is a, a religious leader uh, in one of the uh, churches. Uh, 2023 federal government developed Lagos, not Tinubu APC. That is from Atiku. NNPC, ENP, NOSL foster culture of well-being through public health drive. Okay. We also have Obi Dati Manifesto, and that is what we're going to bring to you right now. It's left for you to scrutinize what that is and read up on it uh, when you have the time and see the relevant questions that you may want to ask. Now that they haven't entered into that office, they will be open for questions. So we'll read it to you. You'll be the judge. Tomorrow we'll bring another one from another party and like that until we exhaust the ones that uh, are in public domain. For the people who may not bring out their manifestos, then we cannot do anything about that. So from the Labour Party, the presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Peter Obi, finally declared his campaign manifesto. It's a 62-page document titled, It's Possible, with a P.O., a big P.O. Okay, you know what that means. Our pact with Nigerians. It was released after a long wait, speculations and disagreements among members of the LP, opposition parties and other vested interests. And in the documents, they outlined seven priority areas if elected come 2023. And this is what they pledged to do. Secure and unite our dear nation and manage our diversity such that no one is left behind in Nigeria. That's one. Move Nigeria from consumption to production. Embark on comprehensive legal and institutional reforms and practicable restructuring measures to fight corruption, to ensure the enthronement of the rule of law and decisively tackle all forms of corruption. To prioritize human capital development through robust investment in STEM education, S-T-E-M, that is it, health and infrastructural development with emphasis on wealth creation, distribution and sustainable development. To engineer the transition of Nigeria from fossil fuel dependency to climate and eco-friendly energy use. Pursue holistic poverty eradication with emphasis on agricultural re revolution through effective utilization of our vast arable lands, particularly in northern Nigeria, and erase Nigeria's categorization as the poverty capital of the world. Improve access to finance, particularly to MSMEs, youths and women to significantly reduce unemployment and insecurity. Ensure that our policy and practice governance will be made more inclusive, cost-effective, transformative and less transactional, no more sharing of the national wealth by a few. Uh, those were the provisions of the manifesto of the Labour Party. Recall that it has been uh, a clamor, there has been a clamor all this while that they need to be a document from the Labour Party and its presidential candidate, Peter Obi, who was talking without a manifesto, without a document to show uh, how he has outlined the things that he intends to do if elected come 2023. Now the document is finally out. It's left for Nigerians to look at it and see the provisions and also see in detail how these provisions will be met if they are elected in 2023. And the same goes to all other parties that are vying for the presidential seat. AAC, ACN, whatever party is vying or trying to get the position of the number one 
man in Nigeria, they will come out with their manifestos. Some of them have already come out with their manifestos. So we'll do well to be bringing these manifestos to you without judging anything, without saying anything. It's left for Nigerians to do the needful, scrutinize it, and let this be the policy document, the covenant with the people. We are going to do X, Y, Z. If they are not able to do X, Y, Z, we know where to go to and hold them accountable. We hope that after 2023, we will have these avenues to interact with the people who call themselves our leaders so that we can tell them what we want them to do, how we want them to do, because after all, democracy is government of the people, for the people, and by the people. And we should know as citizens, and the people who are leading us also should know, that building a bridge is not a dividend of democracy. Making a road is not a dividend of democracy. Even employing people is not a dividend of democracy. Those, those are parts of governance which a military government can do. We always say that the third mainland bridge was built by a military administration. Will they call it uh, uh, dividends of democracy? It's not. It's when the people have the voice in the governance of a place that you can call it democracy. So how much voice will the next president, the next governor, the next local government chairman give to the people to contribute their own quota to the development of their country and their society? That's what we are looking forward to so that we can do the checks and balances and know that the power really belongs to the people. But that's how it's going to be on the show today. We're hoping to meet you again tomorrow on the run-up. Do stay patriotic, fit, and everything. My name is Nyamgul Agaji. Bye for now.